Hello, and welcome to patching cold mech number two. My name is Endor, and today I'll be going over the basic functions of the crease and slope blocks of this incredibly deep module with a focus on what crease, follow, and location are capable of doing. To demonstrate the goings on, this video will have a split screen with the signals displayed via Make Noise CV bus on the left and Cold Mac on the right. The fourth CV in of the bus will display all CVs sent to Cold Mac, whether it be an LFO as labeled or a CV output from elsewhere. All of the technical details are more fully laid out and displayed via block diagram in the technical map available on GitHub. I cannot suggest reading the map enough, especially for anyone questioning how things work behind the faceplate. With that said, let's take a look at what we can do when patching Cold Mac. First and foremost, the survey knob is a manually controlled voltage source. At full counterclockwise, we'll subtract 5 volts and clockwise will add 5, while a center position adds nothing. CV input gets added to the value of the knob. For the purposes of today's video, this voltage gets added to the inputs of slope increase, which makes sense since slope is normal to Crease's input already. Before we can talk about follow, we must go over what its parent control, slope, does first. Slope is, at its core, a full wave rectifier that will invert any negative voltages and leave positive voltages untouched before spitting them back out. This makes slope particularly useful for FM modulation within the mannequin's line and elsewhere. When audio is input, this rectification adds timbral variation to the input signal. Per the map, audio input to the survey jack will be DC biased by the knob before being output down at the slope out jack. Knowing that, follow acts as an envelope follower, hence the name. The output of slope is run through a slew limiter held at a constant rate. With audio injected to slope, the output at follow will track volume and output a variable CV amount from 0 to 5 volts in response. This is incredibly useful for using external sounds or selected elements of a patch to control other elements in a system. A drum hit or low-pass bongo can cause a jolt of FM to a VCO or a sharp spike of resonance to a filter. In this case, a simple drum loop has been inserted at slope to show how each hit outputs a response. Now on to Crease, arguably my favorite block of Cold Mac. At its heart, Crease is a wave folder on experimental pharmaceuticals. Described by Whimsical Raps as a wave slicer, Crease applies a plus or minus 5 volt offset to incoming voltages based on their polarity. If the incoming source is positive, it will get pulled down by 5 volts, while negative inputs get pulled up by 5. This inverted offset causes the CV output to snake between positive and negative, which can cause huge shifts at wonderfully unexpected times. Because of the nature of the severe folding, audio put in decrease will be subjected to asymmetric distortion. Even the nature of the input is asymmetric. Quieter input signals come out of the Mac with aggressive harmonics, while louder signals get tamed harmonic content. Adding to the fun, a saw or ramp waveform will get a 180 degree phase shift applied at the output. While this description has been going on, a simple sine wave LFO from Immutable Instruments Peaks module has been input to survey. Now let's take a brief look at what sweeping the survey knob does. Stay tuned for more CV and audio examples after we go over how location functions. Finally, we have our friend Increases Kawato, Location. At its core, Location serves as an integrator tied to Crease. At the output, you get a CV proportional to Crease's CV in, clipped to a maximum of 5 volts in either direction. The input polarity drives the circuit in similar motion. Positive inputs make location's output rise, negative make it fall. A zero volt input will make the integrator stop in its tracks. Adding to this input's unique behavior is the way in which the circuit excites. Larger voltages in either polarity drive the location output faster, exciting the CV to hit the 5 volt limit as soon as it can. Integrating moments of null voltage via sequence, LFO, switch, etc. can create interesting location reactions. When crease is left unpatched, location gets controlled by survey, with the noon position of the knob stopping the action. This allows for an amazing range of performance gestures to be created, since output voltages from crease and location molted out in a patch will lead to varying degrees of drama. During this description, a make noise maths sum out has been running into crease with the same peaks LFO driving survey. 
Here we have a simple LFO going into the slope in to see exactly how little can happen. And with survey applied. Since follow is an envelope follower, it will not output sound and thus is only used for the generation of CV. Since we know crease will serpentine its way between positive and negative outputs, we can exploit this behavior to make an ersatz LFO by controlling survey. Similarly, we can self-patch this input to slope, then send both a creased and a rectified version of left and right for interesting complementary behaviors. Here, we have the peaks LFO controlling survey, while Math's channel 1 outputs a unipolar signal to slope, which cascades down to crease. Slope's rectified output goes to left and accreased maths to right, and we generate a set of related CV outs as a result. Now the real fun, crease and audio. Here we have a sample of a violin running through crease. Turning the audio input knob from zero to about three PM, we can hear the harmonic content go from wilder to milder. And now the same with an input from the DPO's final waveform. Sweeping the fold knob of the DPO will make interesting harmonic interactions occur. And when we apply the signal to survey and sweep the knob, Since location will only give us CV outputs, let's look at a couple of fun uses. When we apply a sequence CV from Rene, we can see how positive voltages can create interesting CV relations, especially in tandem with an LFO-controlled survey. With the LFO wiggling the survey knob for us, we suddenly have a whole range of options available. Now we have unlocked what is, in my opinion, the most important aspect of cold Mac, self-patching. Taking the output from right, sending it to slope, then taking left and adding it to crease, a small interaction based on gesture gets synthesized. Sweep surveys offset for instant interaction. With this idea of interaction and intermodule ecosystem terraforming, we can achieve what is known as surveillance. Surveillance is the maximal control of a patch with minimal gestural requirement. The notion of a single organ is a means to achieve a deorganized space where the lines of flight are dictated by whim rather than requirement. 
would become the observer in the panopticon, but also remove the state by undermining the body with organs. At 6 a.m., we'd become the police. Here we have a very basic cold Mac ecosystem. An LFO sweeps survey for us, Just Friends sends voltages to right and left, and some basic cross-patching is exploited. Left's reactive output gets sent to slope for rectifying the signal and driving follow in a minor way, increases sending a CV to OR1 to generate a maximum output at all times. We then send every output to every input of Mangrove and Three Sisters, save for the volt per octave of Mangrove, which is being sequenced via Melody Mill. And now we apply surveillance. Try multiple cross-patch ideas. Everything is fair game and it all makes for immediate results. Just remember the golden rule. Don't go output to output. Hidden in the map is a simple patch for a feedback-driven oscillator. Let's quickly mock that up. I will be using a Maleco Mute 4 to combine both signals. I will read the verbatim text of the technical map to display what's been wired up. Left to crease, yes, input to input, crease out to right, left out, audio output, square wave, Mac out to audio output, sine wave. Survey or fade controls frequency of oscillation. Try using a stackable molt to connect left and crease together. Patch a cable into one end of one of the stack cables. Try touching the end of the cable to change the timbre of the sound. Try patching crease into other inputs, or Mac right left into other inputs simultaneously, and the timbre of the VCO will change. Sending voltages from just friends to survey or fade means hands-free noise. Thank you for watching the second video on patching cold Mac. I appreciate your time and any likes, subscribes, comments, and shares. In the next installment of patching cold Mac, or, and, basic logic, and threshold manipulation.